Hello, this is the Best Mac Tutorials, and this is the third question from Answers.com that I'm answering. Uh, this question was, how do you make a Java program return a random number between two numbers inputted by the user? So, first of all, we're going to want to use, I'm going to delete that, we'll want to use our um, java.util, um, we'll want to import java.util to get, or to be able to make both random classes and scanner classes. So first we'll do our import statement, import java.util.wildcard. And that imports everything in the java.util folder, which means we get a scanner object and a random object and tons of other stuff we don't need, but we're just going to make the scanner object and the random object. We could also do it as import java.util.random and import java.util.scanner. You could do it both ways, but this one is only one line of code and it is faster. So we're going to go with that. And so we're going to create our scanner object. Scanner in equals new scanner system dot in. So that's our scanner object. We can now call it with in. So we could do in dot next int like that to use it. Of course, assigning it to a variable or whatever. Um, and then we do our random object. I'm just going to call it random with lowercase r. Random, random equals new, random, so original. And um, then we're going to do a system.out.println statement just to ask the user to input numbers. System.out.println please enter two numbers to generate a number between inclusive those two numbers. That is an awkward sentence, sorry. On uh, system.out.println, please, and it should not be a capital L. Please enter the first, and then transpose two letters there. And then we're going to do, uh, say, an integer uh, d equals uh, in dot next int, and then system.out. S Y S T E M dot out dot printlin, please enter the second. And then int say E equals in dot in dot next int. Okay? So these are just kind of arbitrary letters. I mean they could be called deca or whatever. I mean they can be words or letters. They can't start with a number. They can't be like one D. That's that that doesn't work. So I'm just gonna use D and E, although if you were either going to, one, make a complicated program that you wanted to keep track of your variables in, like what they represent, or two, were like turning this in for an assignment or something, you would want to make those integers, the value, variable names, much more meaningful. So you can look at it instantly and say, oh, I know what theoretically that should be holding, or what that's going to be set up to hold. And so then we're just going to do, um, uh, we're, I'm just going to do a for loop to test this for i equals 200, i is greater than or equal to, say, 0, i minus minus. Okay? And um, the only reason I'm doing that is to test it so we can generate a bunch of, oops, int, sorry, so we can generate a bunch of um, numbers to make sure that it's hitting the range we want. Then, once I'm done, I will, once we're done with testing, I'll take out this for loop, which is system.out.println statement or two, saying that this is the number generated in the range of blah, 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 or whatever. And so there are now too many brackets. Okay, we're good. Um, so inside, we're going to declare an integer um, a, b, c, d, e, might as well do f. Um, just going in that line equals random dot next int. And if I put in here three, it would generate numbers in the range of, it would generate one, it could generate 1, 0, 1, or 2. That's the range it could hit, because it's saying, hey, start at 0, and you can go up 3. Or you can go up, you can generate a total of 3 starting at 0. So 0, that's 1, 1, that's 2, and 2, that's 3. It doesn't generate 1, 2, 3. It's 0, 1, 2. If you did an offset like this, it would be 1, 2, and 3. Now, if you put a variable in here, say d, it would generate numbers up to d minus 1. So if the user input 10, it would generate numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. All the way up to 10, all the way up to 9, because that's 10 minus 1. 
But since we have this plus 1, it would generate 1 through 10. And so we could test that, but we don't really have to. So how would you then make this into something useful for the question in question? Uh, for something that returns... Oh, did it say return? Okay, so if we're returning, then we're going to have to put that into a different method. I don't know if they actually meant return, or if they just meant like print out. So once we figure this out, I'll plop it into a method to, uh, so that we can have a return statement, because, I don't know, that doesn't seem like a very efficient way to do it, but I guess if you're doing it multiple times, having a method that does it for you would be much more, much easier. So anyhow, um, so I guess they're asking for a method, even though they didn't explicitly state that. So I'll put this into a method, the for loop part and whatever wants, actually just the code and the return statement and whatnot, when we're done, the applicable code to that method. Anyway, before I blabber on too much, if you say I want it between, say, 10 and 30. That means it can generate, I'm just going to do it inclusive. They didn't specify whether it's inclusive or non-inclusive, so I'm going to assume it's inclusive. That would mean it could generate 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way up till 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So that means you want to generate a total range of, well here, let's do a smaller number to start with, 10 and 15, so we can actually count them a lot easier. So between 10 and 15, that would be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That is six numbers. 15 minus 10 equals 5. How do you get 6? You add 1 to it. Same works for 16. 16 minus 10 equals 6. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's 7. What? Add 1 to it, you get 7. Okay? And that's just because of, you know, the way subtraction works. I mean, you know, if you subtract this number from this one, it's not going to give you the amount of numbers between them inclusive of both of them is going to give you pretty much inclusive of one of them. So if you add one to that, then you would get the right amount of numbers that could possibly be generated. So we will do that. We'll, we're just going to assume the second number inputted is bigger than the first. It never said we could assume that, but I'm just going to assume that. If we didn't want to assume that, we'd just do it if, like, um, you know, integer to work with equals d, and then it'd say if, um, you know, e is greater than d, then we want to set uh, to work with, um, to work with is equal, e, you know what I'm saying, we could do it like that, but I'm just going to assume that the first one is smaller than the second one. So we're going to subtract I'm going to say e minus d plus 1. Oops, 1. So 16 minus 10, that's 6, plus 1 equals 7. So it generates anything from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the right amount of numbers. Now we have to do our offset to get it into that range. If we offset it by the first one, by d, then guess what we get? Imagine this. You input 10 for b, for d, input 16 for e. 16 minus 10 equals 6, plus 1 equals 7, so it can generate 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Then, what was d again? 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, oops, not 41, 14, 15, and 16, once you add 10 to each of those numbers. So if you add on d, to any number that's generated, it's going to put you right into the proper range because you're offsetting it each number by the minimum that the number can be. So let's test it out. And why is it getting mad? Okay. So if we run this, we will see. It'll ask us for, let's just do a simple range 10 and 16. 16. Oh, we didn't do a system.println system. out.println f. Okay, sorry about that. Now it'll output whatever. So 10 and 16. Look at this. We got quite a few 15s, it appears. Okay. See, we have a 10 there. We have 16 there. You will not find a 9 in here. You don't see any single digits. You will not find a 17 in here. Seems to have worked, right? Now we just got to plop this into a method because they said they wanted it returned. So if we test it and it works, we, need, we, we don't need this for statement hanging around anymore. We don't really want it. Um, so we're just going to delete that all. 
um, align this right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just copy these two lines, or cut them, I guess. Uh, I'm going to make a new method, say uh, public static int um, uh, random between, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> int. Um, I'm going to use e int d, or int d int e. They have to be in the right order. Uh, not alphabetically, but they have to be in the right order of how they're going to be called. Because if I send in a larger and a smaller, it's going to get weird with subtraction. It's going to subtract larger from the smaller, get a negative, and it can generate a negative number between, a uh, number between, if I did um, int f equals random dot next int negative 3, it would throw an error at me saying, hey, that can't be negative. So we're just going to assume that's positive again. And we don't have to. We could write um, kind of spaghetti code to uh, support, you know, saying, hey, you know, either we need to find the absolute value of this or, you know, if whichever one's bigger, subtract the other one from that. So, you know, if, if D is bigger than E, then do this. If E is bigger than D, then do that. We could always do code like that, but I'm keeping it simple because they didn't, they didn't specify we could assume that, but I'm just going to assume that. Um, so, integer, we're just going to paste this code in. F equals random dot next int. We have to create our random equals new random, our random object, which I just did. And, and now we have to do our return statement. So return f. And we don't want to print it out anymore, more than likely. But I'm just going to print it out right now to make sure that's working. But then I'll take that print statement out because it, it never said we wanted to print it, so we wanted to return it. So to call this method, if you'll notice, when we run it right now, this never gets called. We enter 2, we enter 4, and look, nothing happens. It just hangs. Actually, it's terminated. It didn't hang. But it doesn't do anything. Nothing happened. whoop de doo Wasn't that exciting? We need to call this method from our main method. So we say, um, say int f equals random between, and then we pass it two numbers. We pass it d and e, like that. Now, if I called it just without this f here, that int declaration, it would still call it and run, but that return value would be lost. So we have to put int f equals to get that return statement and set it equal to f. Now this could be called q97, I mean, and it would still take the value of f that's returned. It, these don't have to be the same, I'm just making them the same. And in fact, if it'd be less confusing, I'll make that one g. And in fact, these this could be r, as long as we had r defined up here, and it would be renamed to d here, but it would still be called r up here, if you know what I mean. I'm just passing a D and E because that's what was already used. That was that's was that is what was used in the code that I wrote that I pasted in. So it was just easier to reuse those variable names. We could have changed them if we wanted to, and actually probably should. Um, so especially if you're learning Java, like I am actually right now learning Java, um, that way you don't get confused. But I'm too lazy to do that. So if we run this, and you'll notice we never use G at all. So it's kind of hard to check. That's why I put the system.println statement here to print out that number to make sure, hey, it is generating a number, you know. And uh, we can run it a couple times. Just make sure it's generating a number in the right range. That's expected. And um, that's basically it. Um, the first two, and I'll do three. OK, generated three. That's good. Two and three, generated three. OK. 2 and 3, generated 3. Uh, let's say 10 and 50, 40, 29. Okay, perfect. It's hitting within the range. 2, 3, 2. Okay, perfect. Yes. And we haven't got one below 2. We haven't got one above 3 with 2 and 3. And with 10 and 40, we got, what, 29 or something, and that was perfect. So it's obviously working. So I'm going to take the system.println statement out. Just to make sure it's returning the value properly, I'm going to put system.out.println g, just to make sure it is, in fact, grabbing that variable, which I know it is, but we're just going to check it to show that it is returning, 2, 3, 2, okay, it is returning it, and it's able to print it out properly. We're going to delete that line, and now we have a method that we can call by sending it two integers. It then creates a random object inside of it, and actually we can remove this random object in this main method, because we don't use it anymore. We don't create any random numbers in this method. They're all done in this method. Um, we do our little algorithm type thing, generating a number in that right range, and then returning it. Simple as that. Um, I know the 
The only thing that I think was kind of complicated about this was where we kind of pulled e minus d plus 1 from. Um, so I'll just explain that one more time real quick. If e is 20 and d is 10, and you want to generate one between 10 and 20, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's a total of 11 characters. Or 11, sorry, uh, number possible numbers that could be generated that are in that range. Now, if you generate numbers between that range, you want to generate 11 of them and then do your offset. To generate 11, you're going to subtract the first one from the second one and then add 1. Because when you subtract 10 from 20, you only get 10, then you have to add 1 to get to 11. So I hope that um, sums it up, and thank you for watching.